What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's always a huge, huge thanks for coming back. We really, really appreciate you. So again, I've been gone for a super, super long time. And again, sorry, uh, just you guys are freaking amazing and are keeping me super, super busy. We've just been working nonstop, um, trying to get orders out to you guys as fast as possible. And uh, that's what this video is about today. It's a little bit of, up about, it's a little bit of an update on what we've been doing here at the shop to make our lives easier and make us be able to get parts out to you guys a lot quicker than before so uh let's get right to it so again the shop is a little bit of a mess um it's actually not that bad i kind of cleaned up a little bit and then i've been packaging so a lot of the parts have been packaged up but as you can see we kind of moved everything to this wall all of our racks to open up this area right here um I'm also going to be doing something with that those are some these springs you know for the rear end of these trucks that's coming pretty soon hopefully but um but yeah like i said we've got all of our racks over here on the side now which really cleared up this center section which i'm not showing you everything that's over here right now because if you guys remember some, uh, one of my last videos i talked about some pretty big equipment that we're getting in and we got it in and i i want to show it to you guys because it's really really cool like i said we're we've got sway bar brackets we've got our coil buckets our radius on brackets some track bar brackets and all of this is just from this weekend and again a bunch of it is already packaged up uh, a lot of it's been shipped out so again a just a huge huge thanks to you guys um you guys are amazing like i can't believe that this is my job now that this is my business this is my company and that i have people like you the support is the way you do it it blows my mind and i'm so thankful and so grateful to every one of you that supports us even just watching these videos is amazing like i can't believe that you guys spent a few minutes watching watching me so again thank you but yeah again like i said i mean we've got coil buckets we've got coil buckets we've just been super busy but i've been trying to kind of make my uh packaging process faster so we've kind of got my area is over here now by the office and then i set up this rack just strictly for packaging so we've got all of our boxes here we got all of our hardware again all nice grade eight hardware the best um and yeah it's been working really really good the only thing that i gotta do is find a way to incorporate that uh that paper roll thing somewhere over here to make it easier to just you know rip off the thing and package but we'll focus on that a little bit later on uh, i guess you know what let's, let me just show you what i got because i'm super excited like i can't believe that i own these machines now it's something that i've always wanted and let me show you there we go we've got ourselves a cnc press break and this thing is freaking amazing and it looks awesome um we also got a time saver and this thing's also super super cool so basically like if you guys been following me for a while the most advanced piece of machine that i had in this shop was our cnc plasma table by lungmeyer lungmeyer like a little bit our cnc plasma table at crossfire pro by lungmeyer systems i believe that's how you say it uh and obviously it was a huge help and it's what helped me start my business being able to cnc cut everything but um back when we first started in the garage we actually had the small one which was like half the size of this thing anyways back then we would cut the metal and then it would come you know over here to my table we would clean it up like back then i didn't even have the surface and surface conditioning tool which i highly recommend they're really cool we used to clean everything by hand and then from there i would mark the bend lines where everything needed to get bent and then it would come over here to our Harbor Freight slash Swag press break. This thing is a little DIY kit that uh, actually my dad and I put together to bend metal. And that's how I was bending everything. Like that's how that's how I was bending the coil buckets, the radio sound brackets, uh, everything. And we kind of had to compromise sometimes because um, we couldn't do some of the bigger bends. Uh, yes, I still have an old one. So like on these, that's why I had to make those cuts so it could actually bend it. And as you can see now, we were able to get rid of that. So like I said, this is now one nice long bend, no more welding on it. And then we've got these beautiful bends on the side now, and I am just so happy. So now we've got this 
beast of a machine. It's an 80 ton press brake, which from all the calculation that I did and from talking to the company, wrong wing, I'll talk more about how I got it in a little bit. Uh, but basically that means it's, it's about a five foot brake. So it's 80 ton, 160 millimeter. That's the length of the bed. And I should be able to bend quarter inch full width on this bed. Um, I'm actually ordering a, a bigger die just to make it easier on it, I think. But like other than that, amazing machine. Really, really good machine. It runs great. It's got oh, a nice big screen. Actually, let me fire it up for you guys. And I'll show you kind of how I've got it set up. So we've got our power coming to this panel, which is, is 80 amps. Flip that on. Flip this on. And that turns on our screen, which is, this is a full CNC four axis press brake. So what that means is that I can control obviously the up and down. I can control them individually. So the Y1 and Y2, I believe is what they are. And um, okay, so I just had a huge scare. Uh, I was trying to turn on the oil pump, which is that's how you do it. You push this button and it turns on your oil pump. And I kept kept hitting it and nothing was turning on. So I went to go power the machine on and off and all that stuff you're supposed to do. It turns out that the e-stop was engaged on it. I, I hit it on the rack when I was trying to pull it out. Uh, so I feel silly now. I even uh, reached out to the company for help uh, and I feel like a, like a tonto. I feel pretty dumb. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, everything's good. It, like I said, it's, it was user error. So, yeah, you turn it on, turn the oil pump by hitting that button. It sounds horrible. I know. I'm sorry. But from there, we hit our origin button, which basically hones it. And you see it doing its thing. It's zeroing itself out so it knows where it's at. And from there, I don't have any... Anything we could bend right now, I don't think. Okay, I found these things we can bend. Okay, so it's found where it wants to be at, then it moves over here. And we've got some different tooling over here, but. And I have this set up so that I can bend it like that two at a time. Another cool thing with this one is that it's got uh, quick clamps, so. There we go. And just like that, we got a piece that's now bent at 90 degrees and we can use to weld right there for our radius arm brackets. And again, except that is super, super amazing that I can do that. Like that's a part that would take me at least like a minute uh, to do sometimes. Cause like I would have to put it in here, bend it, check to see if it was under bent, over bent, make any corrections. And sometimes it would take forever. I guess let's check to see how close it is. To 90 degrees I know <laughs> so we're about a degree off and that's pretty normal I used to run one of these machines for a about a year at a different fab shop that I used to work at and usually when you first start bending a machine a part you need to cal calibrate the machine because it will overbend and underbend some of the nicer machines do that for you but like right here you can see it has compensate so that was a degree underbent so we would go over here and compensate for that. So it would be like negative one. And that would, oh, not that one. And that right there would, on the next piece, bend it to closer to what I ask it. Um, again, because that's pretty normal, but once you get the first one dialed in, all the other ones bend. Uh, very very close. So anyways, I will show you later on more me bending more stuff I just don't have any stuff to bend right now But again, this thing is an absolute Lifesaver Okay guys, so as you can see we spent the last couple of days uh, Cutting parts Running them through this machine and cleaning them. We still have a few that we still got to run through it uh, But this will give me enough to get started and again, this is also part of uh, making inventory like I want to be able to have uh, enough material in stock either for my welder or like I said for inventory uh, We got to actually bend 
quite a bit of uh, track bar brackets just because that's the only thing we're waiting on right now to finish some kits so we'll probably that's actually one of the things that i sell the most track bar brackets and coil buckets uh but yeah anyways we're now that we have all of this stuff cleaned prepped we're gonna go ahead and bend it uh but as you can see like the machine leaves a beautiful beautiful uh finish i'm actually very very happy with it oh i actually missed a little bit right there that one's gonna get get cleaned again but um yeah again it, it's just that it's literally a time saver like this isn't a, a time saver time saver is a brand um but it's kind of what i know them as time savers but i don't know if i really showed you this machine that well it basically has two belts inside and uh on the front one i have an 80 grit no on the uh, it's actually a 60 grit or no it's an 80 grit and this one should be a 100 grit i believe that's kind of how i have it set up and it's been working great uh, i do got to replace one of these belts i believe because it has a dead spot but i mean it's been working really really well um now if i'm being completely completely honest um i wasn't entirely happy with this machine uh due to like its appearance when it got here like the craftsmanship on this machine is not nearly as close to as good as that like that's actually really good i don't really have any complaints over it and they're supposedly made by the same um company but like this one like has really bad like grind marks almost like freaking like they ground too much and then it's really dirty right now so it doesn't matter but it came with like some rust on places like this like that like that and then i did have to do some work to adjust the um the belt right there so and just little kind of weird things like in the whole process of adjusting the belt um the chain popped off so i had to take this cover and it's like pretty hard to put it back on so i have a plan to make this a little bit more serviceable in the future but that's why that cover is off and then that hinge like this one broke down there that could have been user error though but uh again i don't for the price that i got this thing i can't complain too much because anything else that's comparable will be way more expensive um but again not super super happy with this thing it, it does okay let me kind of re-say that i guess like quality wise and, and looks wise uh, i'm not super super happy with it but like in the way that it works it works really really good so i can't i'm not complaining too much about it again i paid not that much money for it and it, it does its job really well it's just that i wish it could have had the same fit and finish as that machine because again like there's I, I can't complain about it like it's really really nice like all the covers on it are good like it this is really a really good machine like if i'm gonna nitpick about it the like the worst part about it are like these cuts but like this is like inch and a half thick metal like not a lot of things are gonna cut through that really well you know but like I said, uh, everything else on this machine, like I love it. Like I got to pick the colors on it. So I got to pick the, pick the black, that uh, really dark gray, that light gray. Um, and it, it looks beautiful. I love it. And it, like I said, it works, it works really good. But yeah, uh, where was I? Anyways, I'm gonna just start bending all of this. I might time-lapse some of it, but it's just, it's a, it's a great machine. It's, it's amazing. I, I love that I can just do this. Here, I'll, I'll bend apart with you guys. Just to show you how easy it really is to run this machine. I can literally do it one hand. And there we go. It was literally that easy one just single-handedly when i guess in one foot but it works it works great 
it does have a light over there but it doesn't like shine directly into like the bending surface so that's why i have this light harbor freight love it and like the hardest pro process about like running one of these machines is setting up a program which if you guys want i can do that like in a later video but uh again it's just super simple it, it's super super simple again the the worst part is that it's in millimeters right now but like i said um the engineer and i are working well he's working on writing me a program that will be in inches Okay guys, and just like that, we are finished pretty much bending everything. And I kind of left all the coil bucket stuff on the table so you would actually see everything bent. And like I said, this thing is just, it's amazing. And the fact that we can now do all this and do it in the amount of time that we can is, is just amazing. Like, I, I love it. And the main thing that that's gonna allow us to do is it, 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 it will allow me, hopefully, to have a lot more time to make more videos to work on the truck make more parts if there is a ton of parts that i've been wanting to make that i haven't been able to just because i don't have the time because i gotta be i used to be you know cutting the stuff which is now the slow part believe it or not um but i used to be you know cutting the parts cleaning them bending them it was really really tough um and it's also allowed us to save time in the actual assembly and welding of these parts uh, so now as you can see the the main body of the coil bucket it's not one piece and this used to be an individual piece that we used to have to weld onto the coil bucket um, same with like this piece is now one whole piece before we used to have a little weld that went on there so it's just little things like that um, and just like the accuracy like those are like pretty much perfect you know like all of this and that was with me like i said putting the part in the machine bending it once checking the angle if it needed adjustment i would adjust it on the computer and then from there on the machine would just bend everything and it was like i said it's, it's pretty damn perfect like I'm, I'm i'm very very happy with it um <sighs> there's been one problem that i had and i i still don't know what's going on i've been talking to the manufacturer but for whatever reason, sometimes the machine will get confused and it'll think that it's bending off of here when it should be bending over there. So it'll be 50 millimeters back. Um, like I said, I've been talking to them, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, what, I've been, <laughs> what I've been doing is that I'll, I'll shut it off. I'll put it back in its resting position, shut it off, turn it back on and let it go through its whole calibration thing and that seems to fix it but sometimes i gotta do it a couple of times now that's the problem that i've only had happen it started happening uh, a couple of days ago and again it's only happened like once or twice but when it does happen it's kind of annoying to it that you gotta turn it back down you calibrate it uh so we're trying to figure that out again right now i bent all of this stuff and it, it did great so you've got all of this stuff bent all of this stuff bent So more stuff over here and again now that all that stuff is bent like the rest of my day is, is free well i i still gotta go back and finish these parts like i gotta run that through the machine same with that stuff run it through the machine but like that's more than enough stuff for my welder to be busy the rest of the weekend and like i said i can focus on you know working on the truck making videos while i work on the truck because you know i miss that yeah, and it's just amazing. And again, the, the way that I bought this machine is, I did a lot of research. I found the company on Alibaba. And then I did a lot of research on that company. I actually found a, a couple of people that had 
uh, machines from them. One of them is actually a guy on YouTube. He's actually pretty cool. He has a, he's a drum builder. It's VK Drums, I believe. And he actually has a couple of these machines now. <clears throat> Or has had and he was really happy with them i talked to him for a while he was very helpful and made me feel a lot better about buying one of these machines uh but like i said just when you go through that like you have to really make it, it doesn't matter if you, it's if it's this company or any other company on alibaba just do your research you know um a lot of the other companies uh they you couldn't really find any info on their machines or anyone else that had them uh, again, this company, a lot of good info, good people, you know, they were able to answer my questions. Plus, like I said, I was able to find other customers that I could talk to that had these machines, which, again, made me feel a lot, a lot better. Um, now, as far as importing it, they actually handled all of it. This machine, I bought it, and it was delivered to my shop. Um, I didn't have to worry about importing it, about, I paid them the taxes, I don't know if they charged more or less, but it was a very stress-free um, way of doing it. Um, doing it. To me, it was worth it, like I said, I don't know if I ended up paying more in taxes or not, but it was very nice just having them deliver it all the way to my shop. Now, as far as like technical support or training, I, I didn't get any of that, like nobody came here and installed it and trained me on it. Uh, but luckily, like I said, I, I have experience with these machines and it kind of carried over to this one, you know, like this is getting it started, getting to know the interface and, you know, we went from there. Now, I know that I'm going to get maybe some hate or questions of why I didn't go with the U.S. brand and that's, that's money, uh, honestly. Like if I had the money, I would have honestly, I would have probably done with the U.S. machine, you know, but uh, this sort of machine kind of comparable from the people like Cincinnati, I believe it's a U.S. machine. Uh, I think Amada is, has some U.S. made machines. But I got a quote from Cincinnati, and I think it was over $100,000. And that's, this is a quarter of that, honestly. Um, now, is the Cincinnati a better machine? Yes, of course. Is it have better support? Yes, of course. Would someone would have come here and installed it and trained on it? Yes. Um, but I just can't afford that. Like, I wish that I could afford that, but like, again, a lot of my time, a lot of research, I found someone that I, I trust, and thus far, you know, not going to It's been a great machine. Will I one day own a Cincinnati or an Amada? I don't know, maybe, if, you know, we get to that point. If you, if you guys keep being amazing like that, yes. Uh, the other big purchase that I, I want to get to one day is a laser. Um, a laser will blow that machine, you know, out of the water. The quality is amazing. Uh, but we're not quite there. Will I buy the laser from this company? This company also makes lasers. I don't know. That's a whole different animal. I don't have any training on them. And it requires a lot more skill, you know, than something like this. So it's something that I would consider maybe finding a, a U.S. supplier. Um, I was actually talking to a guy before I bought this machine that... He started also importing similar machines from China and then, you know, reselling them, which is a business that I could honestly go to if I wanted to. Uh, yeah, I was a little impatient. Uh, I had a lot of questions. I wanted to get the right machine again. Like I said, when I was first looking for machines, I was out of my, I'm out of my garage. So I wanted to get a machine that would fit in there and I would have the power for. And he wasn't really too helpful. Uh, he, Maybe it was my fault. I maybe asked too many questions, but again, I wanted to be sure that what I spent my money on was going to work for me. You know. Again, that guy now has a much bigger business. Again, he started importing machines like this from China, and I believe he still imports machines like this from China, but it's his own brand, which is super, super cool. And like his lasers, they look really pretty nice. And I think like if I would go and buy a laser, I'd probably get something from him. Uh, just because he goes, installs them, he's very knowledgeable, knowledgeable, so he trains on the machines. So if I was to ever buy a laser, which I you know, hope that within the next couple of years we're able to do that, I'll probably get it from someone from him because with a machine like that, in my, in my opinion, in my mind, it's really worth getting the knowledge and the training. Um, again, I was already trained in these machines and I already had some knowledge, so to me it was worth it saving you know like the 25 percent 50 percent markup that you know these people add to these machines and do it myself 
so again like i said so far it's been worth it it's been a great machine i'm super happy with it and i you know i hope that we have you know some some good years with it and again do your your own research like i said but this brand you know this company has i found them to be very very good and the cool thing about them is that they actually offer some very very small machines which is what i wanted to to work to get to work in my garage like i started talking to them about basically a bench top machine um it was like a 20 ton machine super super small probably it was a meter so quite a bit smaller than this quite a bit shorter that would have worked great in my garage and like i said uh we ended up getting this space so we ended up going with the bigger machine higher tonnage machine and i'm very happy with it and they're they can basically build whatever machine you want however you want it i could have gone with the six axis back gauge a my much a more advanced uh, computer system but again i i kind of chose what i really wanted which was at least a four axis back gauge a their own system that controls the computer and like those thus far i've been happy with it now again like i said the computer system is kind of the only thing that i've had a few little problems with but other than that it's been great uh, but yeah i mean i think i've already gone way too long with this video hopefully it makes sense if yeah if you guys have any questions or anything else you want to want me to go over with this machine just let me know and i'll be you know i'll be glad to to do it but yeah anyways uh leave a like uh, we've got some amazing stuff coming guys in the next few weeks uh i hope you know you're ready for it i'm i don't know if i'm ready for it but i'm super super excited and uh, it's going to be a whole new new sharp chapter in uh in, in the glowing diesel designs business community uh it's I'm, I'm very excited so leave a like make sure to subscribe and i will see you for the next one